than when I my my buttocks barely touch a sheet, and then I just I I don't fall down. I just gently let myself down. Now you can once you learn how to do this, you can go to any height you want. Now, and I'm dead serious. It's going to make you laugh, maybe. There are telephone lines out there, and there are planes out there. So be aware of that. You can go any. You just name your height, and if you can take that kind of height with nothing to stand on, you can do it. And if you want to go left, think left. You want to go right, think right. If you want to do a somersault, do it. If you want to lay on your back with your arm resting, with your head up against your hand, like you're laying on the beach on your side, go for it. But, but I mean, this takes practice, all right. But you can do it. You can be perfect about it, and uh, boy, I, I there are many times I just start chuckling my wife. I mean, many times, and uh, it's, what's going on? And uh, and it's happened enough to that she knows when I'm chuckling like this, I'm seeing this. I just love to go down the road, like I said, setting on air, like I'm driving a car with my arm out a visible window with my hand on a steering wheel, and break the speed limit. And have a cop chase me, and they toy him like a like a cat toys a a dog. You know, well, he's still too far to catch me. I better slow down. You know, and then speed up. And I do that with a cop. I just love to do that. And when when they finally think they got me, I just slide up over the fence line on the right and off across the field. And she's just just for the fun of it. I'd love to do that. But anyway. The trick on doing almost anything is childlike mind, and you need to quit trying. You have to try to do a lot of these things. But when you can enter into, I'm just enjoying myself. I'm a little kid again. That's when these things will take effect. Not only this, but other things. No. I'll add one more. Boy, you guys are getting a, you're getting a, I could get rich off of you. I sell these lessons at $33 a page, so 30, 60, 90, you know. And, uh, and uh, uh, so you guys are getting an earful. You're, you're good people and you're well worth it. And uh, invisibility. That is my favorite thing. I love doing it and God lets me play with it. But I, I, in, in all the teaching, God has only told me once to do it in front of the students and only do it so much. And when these two guys, just two students, their eyes bugged open, I know, and I'd gone just as far as I was supposed to go. They were seeing right through me. They were seeing the couch from, from you know, down below, just above my ankles to just below my neck. They were seeing the couch. And me, I was like an apparition. And my, my, my head and everything was fading out. They were seeing the wall and everything like that. And they, oh, their eyes opened up and, okay, click, back, I'm, I'm done. Just to show them it could be done. Then I took a, a whole class that there was, uh, what do we got here? Three, six, ten here right now, eleven with uh, Little Rich. And uh, I think there were 17. And I told them what I'll tell you and taught them what I'll teach you. And four of them uh, started fading out. One in and out, in and out like a blinking light. Couldn't make up, up her mind. You know, they just whoosh, start to fade. Bing, fish, bing, fish, bing. And nobody else out of the, there were 17 in that class. Nobody else did it. And none became fully invisible, but uh, uh, they were well on their way. And to be invisible, you become a chameleon. That's all, just a chameleon who can change its colors to its background. Like you're, you're all sitting here in chairs or a couch. Look at the color chair. Go ahead, turn around, look at the color. Get it in your sight. From top to bottom, look at it. Now, all you do, folks, is just start telling yourself audibly, I am the chair. I am 
the chair. I am the chair. Until you start believing I am the chair. Same color, everything else. And suddenly your head's up there, but nothing else is. Maybe your feet are on the ground, you know. And uh, but if you get good enough, all of it you can disappear. I go to I am the, I am nature. I am the air. I, I which includes the trees, the bushes, and stuff. I've had to spend five and a half hours on a black military black op military base, where they literally shoot any trans and they do trespassers. And I had to spend five and a half hours in invisibility doing that. Literally walking by two of their guards with high-powered sniper rifles and big scopes. And I walked, I would say, right at six or five and a half feet from them. Right in front of them in pure daylight. I could see them, but they had no idea. And I tell you, that was in all my life. Uh, I've only had maybe one other event in my life where I was scared. And they called me fearless, but I tell you, man, I was scared. That was that was hell. Five and a half hours of that. Because I had to go there and had to do something. And I didn't get it done and I got to go back. And uh, let's face it, I was so scared, I wrote letters to all my family, my grandchildren, my wife, and I made my will out. And because I knew what I was heading in for. And, uh, That's the place where you saw the pyramids? Yeah, the Forbidden Pyramids. Man, <clears throat> what a spot. And I'm called to go back there and retrieve something. And there's three places that something is. And being that I'm the only one that has found one of the three places, it's my responsibility to get it, if I can. But that's another story. I wouldn't wish that on whoever has to find one of the other places. If I if I don't go, somebody else will. Terrible. But nevertheless, a worthy cause. But I walked around. Now I I go beyond not being seen. They cannot sense me. They cannot touch me. They cannot feel me at all. And they cannot hear me. And I'm on very big, loose rock that just rolls under feet as you walk. They didn't hear a thing. And they looked right through me. And uh, uh, in, in, when you're in this form of state of mind, invisible, and say you're walking downtown invisible and somebody inadvertently hits you and their, their shoulder will roll and they think they had a tick, a jump, you know. And uh, they just cannot know you're there unless you allow it. There has been, if I remember right, one time where they couldn't see me but I decided to let them know that I was there. So I, I said something. And geez, you know, they jump. And, uh, you know, if you want to be heard, say now. They can hear me. If you want to be seen, just say now. Bang and bam. You appear in front of them and just scare the living daylights out of them. But, uh, and it goes much further. What, I, what I've done is... is you just say that to yourselves aloud, whisper it, whatever, until you're convinced you are the chair or the tree or the air or the field or the house. And, and I add on, they cannot see, sense, smell, hear, touch, you know, nothing of me. I'm non-existent. And it works. And it uh, uh, works great with animals. I like to go into a, a half mode, spook mode. And at one time, we had a guard dog belonging to a state patrolman, and I was working with a, a street uh, or a cable company way out in the hills, and this patrolman had his house way out there, and he had this vicious animal <laughs> that thought anything within eyesight was his property. 
And boy, I tell you, we get there early, early in the morning before the sun is up and our big equipment literally parked across this little two-lane country road. And these guys would get everything in their hand, open the door and run to their big machines because the dog, once that car door opened, that dog was astral. And they were making fantastic time. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided I've had enough of this. I'm a flagman. I'm standing out there with this dog is threatening my life all the time. And I said, not oh, heck with this. So I went down that night and I bought a bag of, uh, what was it, those pigskins, fried pigskins and uh, sat on a rock in his yard. And boy, this dog saw me rawr, 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 off in the distance. And I very calmly ignored all the barking. Very calmly, yeah, I had this open. And very calmly just ignored him and that really ticked him off. You know, you can take your mind off a charging buffalo and you know, He's charging you, trying to create fear and make you run so he could trap you to death and have a little fun to boot. But if you can take away the fear factor that you're standing there in that buffalo or bear or whatnot, if you can do it fast enough, if you get good enough that you can do it fast enough, it confuses the animal and it slows down, saying, hmm, you know. And uh, anyway, this dog is <laughs> barking like crazy and I'm ignoring him really like he didn't exist on this planet. And uh, there, this is a form of invisibility. They can't hear me. They, you have to make them not believe that what they might be hearing is anything but strange noise right in front of them. They don't see anything. Eh. But uh, the dog coming at me, and boy, he's snarling and, and just chewing air. And a big, big black shepherd and uh, now he had every right to bite me I was in his protective zone and I was there deliberately but I ignored him and ignored him and ignored him and then I reached in and slowly took out one of these pig skin and flip, flipped it off to the side about seven eight feet and uh, this dog seeing that too and I'm throwing rocks at him that makes him all the more matter but I'm ignoring him. And then I slowly said, I am the air. I am the, the rock. I am not here. I am disappearing. I am this. I am that. And But there's a point where you can go all the way or you can stop. And I stopped in, in this ghost form. This, all he could see was an outline with color and stuff, but he could see right through it. Now this was really confusing him. And he's getting real close. And naturally on the way he's got to find out what that rock was. And hey, that smelled pretty good, you know. So he had to test that rock out. Mm -hmm. All right. So I threw another piece. But I'm in, I'm in ghost form. And I'm still totally ignoring him as far as he's concerned. Now naturally your mind is on him. But it's it's a form of splitting. You have to totally believe he's not there at the same time knowing full well he is. You learn this in time if you if you practice this. And uh, so I'm pitching these little pieces of pigskin out, and he walking all around me, you know, about seven eight feet around me, just checking this apparition out. That's totally ignoring him. Like you want to bite me? Come on and bite me. You ain't gonna get nothing, you know. And no fear at all. And uh, so the circles are getting smaller and smaller and I would be throwing these pigskins a little more closer and closer. And finally, I had him right beside me. So I just held a pigskin. And he, he smells me, he smells a pigskin, but the, how do you smell fog? You know, but he smells me. But then that pig skin looks good, so he takes the pig skin. And I started doing that some more. And boy, he, he's calming down. He's not worried about this ghost that's feeding him. So I slowly, with this in hand, slowly started bringing my back, myself back into full, solid sight. And 
It didn't startle him at all.